zero accounting software, comparative balance sheet creation. Get ready to be an office hero with zero. Here we are in our custom zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation, zooming in a bit, holding down control, scrolling up on the scroll wheel, currently at 175% zoom in, opening the demo company, but doing so with the reset button, resetting the data and opening the demo at the same time. We're gonna open a few tabs up top, duplicating the tabs to put reports in as we do every time, first hiding right click in the tab up top to duplicate it right click the tab up top again to duplicate again tab to the middle we're going to go to the accounting drop down open up the balance sheet standard as we do every time tab to the right the accounting drop down this time we want the p to the l the profit to the loss the income statement tab back to the right and we're going to change the date and bring it up to a custom date for 2022 December and that's what we want update it that's the uh, process that we have been doing every time support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it this time we're going to make a custom comparative balance sheet using the edit layout tools below in prior presentations we looked at the balance sheet in general and we looked at some of the tools up top here remembering that as we learn these tools they're not just applicable to the balance sheet we can apply them to other uh, reports as well also just note that the balance sheet is and the income statement are the two primary end reports when you're thinking about applying these tools to any other report it's useful to think of them in terms of are they like the balance sheet in that they have one time frame as of a point in time or like the income statement which has a beginning and an end type of report that can have some implications in terms of the type of formatting you're going to do including comparative reports which we're going to be working on at this point in time so we'll start with the balance sheet reports over here and we also saw that there's some custom balance sheet kind of layouts that we could do so for example if i hit the drop down we've got the uh comparing the comparing items let's update that so this gives uh december and november December 1st and then uh, November. So that's a, a neat and nice uh, report. So now, however, we might wanna add some other columns here that will give us some more detail, possibly a difference column. So instead of having like multiple uh, comparative months or quarters or whatnot, we might have another column over here saying, give me the difference between these last two months. Uh, where do we stand as of one month versus the end of the other month? and we could have a percentage uh, difference uh, as well percentage increase or decrease that we could add so those i'm going to try to start with this report and add these other two items to it with the edit layout items down below now remember as we work in zero if i go to the first tab and i go to my accounting drop down and the reports we don't have as many kind of comparative reports in the defaults over here as some other software like a quickbooks for example but I actually think that's kind of nice because they're not really flooding this area with too many reports because most of those reports you can construct from a standard report. So if you want them, we can construct them and that's what we'll do here. We've got the default options up top and then we'll add some more things with the layout view. The layout view, let's go ahead and click on it, can be a little confusing at first, but once you get used to it, it's fairly intuitive, but it has a lot more flexibility than than some of the other some some other tools that might be used in other accounting software so for example if i wanted to like collapse these items here i could show the report in a in a collapsed format like this and and that will show like a summary uh balance sheet which we might talk about a little bit more later but if i update that just to check it out 
and I don't have to worry about this uh, messing up my original balance sheet because it, I could just save this as a draft here. So we don't want to to uh, make it our, our default report, but I can save it as a draft and I should still be able to open up a standard balance sheet and not have a problem with it. Let's go ahead and do that, by the way. Let's go to the right tab and duplicate and make another balance sheet just so we can see a standard balance sheet as comparating to it. Let's open up another balance sheet here and just make this one as of the end of December 2022 so we have something to compare to so we'll have that so there's that let's go back to the first tab so so now so see how we collapsed it this could be a nice simplified view so you could just say instead of having all the details you just have the balances for the categories of accounts right so we can have those options which is nice let's go back to the edit layout again and we'll talk more about some of those different options later, but I'm gonna expand these again, expand all of these items. And then what we would like to do is now we've got two columns up top, so I'd like to add another column. So just a quick, a quick uh, recap of the tools. You've got a, a text block that you can add to it. You've got a schedule they can add at the bottom. You've got a footer. You've got the rows. So if I wanted to add rows in between these items, we can add a row. We've got the columns, which is what we're going to work with, having a column to the right. And you've got a page break. And then you can delete some of these items over here. And we can also group some items together, which we might talk about uh, in future presentations to show some of these drop downs and and uh it's a kind of similar to making sub accounts on other software like a quickbooks or something like that but right now what i'd like to do is make another column to the right by the way just note that you can also say this notice i have the most recent column or or amount first here if you want to see it the other way in like chronological order you have the capacity to do that right i can pull this one on either side so i can go the december to November or November to December, which that's neat flexibility that we have there on our reports. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a column. So I'm gonna add a column and I wanna make it a formula column because I wanna make a formula between these two items. And the formula is gonna be fairly straightforward. I'm just gonna say, I wanna take the December numbers minus the November numbers. So I'm gonna say, I'd like you to take December minus November. See how, how neat that is? And I can just have a difference column that I have constructed. I don't want to show it as a percent. I just want to show the actual number. And then the heading I'm going to say is going to be, let's just call it the change, the change or difference, uh, you might call it. So I'm going to say that. Let's go ahead and update the layout and check it out. So I can update it and there it is so how neat is that so i can t i subtract these two and there's the there's the change column so so now the next common step is to have a a percentage increase or decrease so if i pull out the trusty calculator the calculation usually looks something like this if i this is like a horizontal type of analysis so if that's the change or difference i got the 2194.55 divided by the prior month which is in this case is the 6978.08 so moving the decimal two places over 31.44 so let's try to do that calculation and add another column over here so i'm going to go into the page layout and we're going to say add another column and i'm going to make it a formula column again and so i'm going to say okay so there it is now let's say this is going to be the change divided by the uh the prior month november i mean how neat is that that you could do so you can imagine a bunch of different flexibility you have within the system and other software like a quickbooks or something like that if you wanted to do some more complex reports now you can build a report kind of like this in a quickbooks for example but with with kind of more the default settings but they're much more restrictive you can imagine building reports within zero with these kind of formulas that are are more detailed it's kind of a neat thing 
I think. So I, I so then this is going to be I'll call it the percent change, percent change, and so let's update that, and let's check it out. Let's check it out. So it has to think about that when it's calculating. So there it is. So now we've got our change over here. So that calculation here once again was the uh, the change to one nine four point five five divided by the prior month which is 6978.08. So there we have it, 31. So there it is. And, I, and now I might want to see that as a percent, right? I was going to put it as a percent. Let's go back to the edit layout and make that uh, show it as a percent. Update it. Boom. Calculates. Shows as a percent. So cool. So, so that's a nice report. Now, now we could adjust like up top. I might call this like a comparative balance sheet. Comparative, and you can change the name up top. Notice for some reason it's kind of it's kind of frustrating. They don't let us change this item right here. So, so it's still going to have the company name and the as of. Because I might say, well, it shouldn't really be as of now because there's kind of like two dates down below. So you would think you'd be able to change that but that's not going to bother me too much if you wanted to change it you could export it to excel and uh, change it there i don't believe you have the custom capacity to change it for some reason within the software which is it's kind of weird because everything else is so nice and flexible but so there we have that now we might want to like oftentimes we might want to like remove the decimals so like, sometimes i like to take the decimals out uh, so i'll take that out and update that so now we've got the decimals removed. This is still in a percentage format. Looks a little bit cleaner that way. So that looks nice. So I'll, I won't do too much more, but I just want to note just some other things on the flexibility of this edit layout because we're just kind of like touching the surface on it. Just realize that you could change like the, uh, the, the, the ordering of these kind of accounts, which is another thing that you have a lot less capacity to do in software oftentimes like a quickbooks for example and also remember you don't have to have the account numbers on so you one way you can change the order is you can is you can turn on your account numbers or your uh your account codes and that'll that'll put the order not by alphabetical order within each category but by code but you can also i can hit the drop down and say i'm going to take that off and go to my edit layout and and make the change down here as well so say i want say i want the office equipment above above the computer equipment so i can make that kind of change in here and update it as well so it doesn't go in alphabetical order within a particular category necessarily if i make some customizations like that so now i've got the office before the computer so that's again really neat stuff that we can do so now that you have that you could save it and of course export it if you did it if you needed to do more editing you, you could uh, export it to excel i'm going to save it just as a custom report right now just to show and i'm going to call it a comparative i'm not going to make it i'm not going to make it my default i'm just going to save it in the customs and then if i go back to the first tab and I go into my reports drop down here and we go into the custom reports. Uh, hold on a second. What happened? Hide this. <laughs> and then I'm going to go, let's do that again. I'm going to go into the reports and there's the reports. I'm going to go into the custom and there's our custom report. So if I was to just open this up in the future in the following month, let's say, and I wanted to open it up and then my my layout is fine i can change the date then up top to whatever i want to change you know the date to and and there we have the layout saved so that's why you have a you have a lot more it takes a little bit more work and a little bit more uh understanding to use this edit layout but this edit layout thing has way more flexibility within the actual software in zero than some other software so once you get the hang of it once you build the custom reports then you can you can have more customization within the zero software as opposed to having to like to export it to excel and then make changes in excel and so on that you would have to do like every time so I, it's a really neat tool this this thing here that i that again 
could be a, a like a game changer for some people i feel like in terms of if you want to be able to do a little bit more customization in terms of just the look and feel and organization of your reports in this fashion so we've just touched the surface on it on this one we'll do a couple more like this but you can you can take a look at these tools and get a feel for them uh, yourself